We're recording. Hello, service Chris. Psych. Welcome back to the podcast. He has a bird. I am your hell. Uh. You suck. Every time we do this, you mess this up. Just keep going. You make me nervous. People like to see. I don't know. People like people. People like to see people fail. Is what it is. So yeah, we were doing that. Yeah. Super. Danke. Hello, service Chris. Hi, welcome back to the podcast. He has a bird. I'm your host, Shancha. I've done it 50 times now, even more so. So you think I'd be better at it. You're still not very good at it. I am your host, Sean Shelton. Um, anybody who's been following uh, my podcast or the YouTube channel knows that voice. That is my oldest brother, Captain Patrick Shelton of the U.S. Army. Patrick, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me again. Of course. So, Every time Patrick's on, we do our segment, Captain to Captain, and we talk about things that lessons or characteristics that we've learned through American football that he's applied in his professional life uh, post playing. And I've helped develop to to further my playing career and how similar and how similar those things can be, but also some differences. And in our first and this will be our third installment, our first installment, we talked about uh, consistency and creating great habits uh, that help you success that help you lead you to success in the in the future or down the line. And then the second time we talk, or the second installment, we talked about dealing with anxiety, which kind of piggybacked off our first installment. And actually, this third installment, we we came up with within the second installment. It wasn't really a plan. We're not really mapping this out, uh, so to say. It's kind of happening organically, and. Basically, while talking about dealing with anxiety, we brought up uh, if you if you use the techniques that we talked about in dealing with anxiety episodes and the consistency techniques that we talked about in the first insta- installment, that'll help lead you to a positive mindset or a winning mindset. A lot of people, uh, you know, in self help or um, motivation realm, talk about, and I think that's in in my football career and I know yours as well, we've both been on successful teams and we've both been on very underachieving teams. Like there's if you there's actually really, no like middle ground. It's really, either been. Right. I haven't been a part of very many mediocre football teams. It's yeah. like, uh, man, six and six this year, you know, or five yeah. and five, you know, a couple yeah. four and sixes. Yeah. Most of the time not. Uh, and, uh, it's very interesting because having, especially as a group, you know, individually is the mindset of each player or the confidence level of each player can, and can different, differ greatly. But it, the, the mindset of the entire team or the entire group is very palpable. Like when you're in the locker room or you're on the practice field, I think even from an outside perspective, you can go, that team's doing well or that team's not doing well or won't be doing very well in the near future. Um, so, the topic is very interesting to me and prevalent in my playing career, but I don't, it's one that's very, very hard to define. And so that's why I'm going to lean on you in this episode. Pat, what, what do you think, first of all, the characteristics that develop into winning? Well, I guess let's do first, what is a winning mindset? Define that for us. And secondly, what do you think are the characteristics or the things that need to be installed or established in order for an individual and a group to have a winning mindset? Yeah. So uh, a winning mindset, I mean, in, in its simplest form and, you know, you, people say it all the time. It's like the, it's like the, 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 I can do uh, uh, mindset. And that seems like kind of cliche or, a, or, a, you know, a, a term that, that the teams use, but um, you know, it, it is developed through winning, but it's also developed, I think, through losing too. And it's kind of a, it's a, it's a really dangerous two-way street to me because me, I've been on more losing teams than I have winning ones. Okay? Yeah. So when you look at, when you look at the, you know, developing the winning mindset, like it's very easy um, to develop, you know, like, like take, take University of Alabama, for example, right? Like they've, they're like one of the best teams in college football year after year after year after year, right? It's easy to it's easy to say, hey, those guys have a winning attitude, they have a winning mindset, they have a winning, you know, it's just like it's just ingrained in their culture, okay? So that's but, but what happens when it's not ingrained in your culture? What happens when when you're part of, you know, 
constant two and eight teams, three and seven, four and six, much, much, much like, much like I have been. How do you still come out on the backside of that? A, a with a with a with a winning attitude. I think that's very hard because it would, you know, it, it common sense would say, hey, you you've been on a you've been on losing teams, so um, you know you end up maybe playing maybe just you know, hey, like if I lose, whatever. You know, not that, not that big of a deal because I'm used to it. Yeah, being – exactly. That's what I was about to say. Being unsuccessful turns into the norm. Yeah. And so I have, you know, taking it from my athletic career to my, to my professional career, um, you know, every game I would go in, I would go in thinking like, hey, you know what? We may not win this game but I'm going to try. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do everything in my power and, 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 and be sure that everything um, that I can do uh, to help my team win this game. And, it, you know, you hear, you hear like, you know, Bill Belichick will say it, like, like just do your part, you know? Um, and so developing the winning mindset is just like, Hey, I can do it. Like I can go out there, I can go out there and I can get, I can get beat up by a bigger team, by, 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 you know, get thrown around by a bigger player on one play, but then the next play, I'm coming back just as hard. Mm -hmm. And so being on losing teams, I've kind of learned like, hey, and and, and I didn't really know this until later on in my professional career, like, hey, I've been on mostly losing teams, right? I played hard every game to try to win that game. Even though statistically you could look and, and say the team that we're playing, like they are better than us, right? lot of losing teams but then I just learned hey I'm getting beat up here and just keep coming back and back and back and Mm -hmm. back so now in my professional career um you know through the schools that I've been to the training that I've got you know you think to yourself man like this is bad like like I'm not in a good I'm not in a good I'm not in a good uh position here or whatever you got to keep fighting Mm -hmm. like and and you learn like hey I can do this I can take one more step I can climb I can climb and climb that mountain. I can, I can run one more play. I can, you know, you're never, you know, I've learned, you know, through my experience, you're never as tired as you think that you are. And you're only beat if you keep telling yourself that you're beat. So that was like kind of a long, a long answer to a, to a short question. Um, but that, that, that's kind of how I, yeah. how I have yeah. worked through it over the years. Yeah. Um, basically a winning mindset is is basically having the self-confidence to believe in yourself to be able to be able to perform or achieve what you want to achieve and secondly having the resilience to deal with failure word is i think is i is i think resilience Mm -hmm. like you're getting the you're getting the shit beat out of you and you know it you got to keep coming yeah but the the, the interesting thing, because like I said, we both had a, a, a similar athletic career in terms of before I came to Austria, right? We both played at the same high school, obviously. It was a very underachieving football program. Uh, your college was actually more successful than mine because um, you guys put, had some competitive seasons where you were competing for a conference championship, but you also had some unsuccessful and uncompetitive seasons. And so both of us had a transition period, yours in college, mine in high school, where you went from an uncompetitive team or a mediocre team um, into a, a championship contending team. And what's interesting, if you can think back on that time, and because I don't, I don't have a, a, I have a theory, but I don't have a defined answer. What, my question to you is, what, how does a winning mindset from an individual transfer into being a winning mindset of a collective group of individuals? Because everybody, you know, on, on any given bad team, there's a couple players that either have the talent or the ability of the work set or the work ethic or whatever. You never play, especially in college football, you never play a team with la- lacking total overall talent. You know, they might have holes, but it's never like that team is awful it's like okay that guy can play that guy can play they're just surrounded by guys who can't play so when you're in a scenario where everybody has talent like scholarship level college football some have more some have less but everybody has talent for the most part 
how does that winning mindset transfer from an individual to a collective group in your opinion? Yeah. So this is, this is a really hard, it's a really hard question to answer. I'll, I'll answer in, in a couple of different ways. Um, so first off, you know, it's, it's, it's much easier, it's much easier for, um, you know, the, the smaller the team, the, the, the easier that I believe that it, that, that, that it is. Historically, football teams are, especially at the college level, they have, could have, you know, upwards of a hundred players on them, yeah. you know, and then, and then, and then in the, 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 the organization that I serve in now, it's, you know, I'm, I'm responsible for, you know, anywhere between 85 or hundred soldiers or, you know, whatever. Right. Um, so, you know, you have, you know, on a football team, think of me as you're, you're the captain of the football team, right? Mm -hmm. You obviously got selected as a captain of the football team, you know, because your attitude, your, your, your work ethic, leadership, um, you know, performance in the classroom, like whatever it may be. Right. Um, that, that kind of thing, you know, your attitude, like that can be, that can be infectious. Right. But you don't have direct, you don't have direct, influence on everybody on the team right so like let's say let's say i was i'm the i'm the captain of the football team right and i am i'm a defensive lineman you know which is what i was right the circle of defensive linemen that i had around me because they were the ones predominantly that i was with in practice that small group of people they were like hey maybe i'll maybe i'll be like this guy maybe i'll work like this guy you know think like this guy talk like this guy you know you know, do stuff in the classroom like this guy, right? And then, and then, and then, 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 it can, then it can spread, but it doesn't happen fast. It's actually a very, 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 very slow process. And then you start talking about, um, you know, the culture of a, of, of a team, right? The culture, uh, you know, buy-in from a team, you know, sometimes it's hard, you know, if you, if you have, if you have one guy on the team that, that is bought into the team and then you have 99 other players that aren't, it's going to take a long time to change that mindset. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's, 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 that's one way to do it. You know, when you're trying to look at it from like an army perspective, you know, I don't have direct influence over all of my soldiers, right? I can only be what right looks like. I can only be, or what I think right looks like. And, I, and, and, and the people that observe me directly, they, they need to see what right looks like. And then that filters down to the, to the lowest level. Right. Um, you know, but then you start talking about direct leadership versus organizational leadership. And that's kind of a whole different, a whole different topic, but, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think back on. So when I was in high school, um, Pat and I played on the same team when I was a freshman, when I was a first year and he was a last year, basically. And we weren't very good. We were it awful. Wasn't, it wasn't so much a lack of talent. It was, a, we had good influences. players. Yeah. Uh, which is just half the battle. Yeah. Um, and then, so my high school career, in a nutshell, I think was three and seven. Was that right? Three and seven, uh, your senior year. I think. I eight, think. Eight, maybe. I yeah. Know. Yeah. Something in that range. Uh, I think it was three and seven, four and six, four and six, seven and three. Yeah. And so we took a, a seismic jump. Three wins in ten games is a pretty big jump in wins from my third to last year, my my junior year to my senior year. And the reason we were winning games is actually we had less talent than your senior year, but we had much better togetherness. We had much better, we, did. we had much better camaraderie and we had much better, we had, we had a much better culture overall. Well, yeah, we had better coaching too, which helps that. Uh, but I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think how we went from a team that's never had a winning record in school history, which at that point was like 12, 13 years. So nothing crazy, but the team, the football program had never had more than five wins to having a tiebreaker from almost winning the district or uh, the conference, whatever it was yeah, called, yeah, district championship. Yeah. Um, and beat perennial teams that were our rivals that were always beating us. Um, and I think when looking, because if I look at my college career, we were, we never were able to turn it over. And then my European professional career, I was never on a bad team. So it was never had to be turned over. So this was the only instance where we went from being unsuccessful to successful and the transition of having a losing mindset or, or not a winning mindset to a winning mindset. And I think if I remember, 
the thing that got us there was embracing like the small wins, right? Like it was, it was the little things because we, we were very mediocre below average, but then we would, we would play a half of football that was really good and compete against a team we shouldn't have competed against. And then it was like, okay, not bad. Like, okay, we, we showed a little bit there. And so like, not that there's uh, more wins or more victories, but it's like, okay, noted step up. Okay. We can compete at that level for a short amount of time. How do we make it the next thing? And it's like, okay, we beat somebody we shouldn't have beat. Okay. Noted. Okay. And then we have a really good spring game and surprise a team that we shouldn't have surprised. And then these little incremental victories or wins built up into, it just kept in the back of our heads because we were all persistent and we were all really close knitted and we all worked relatively hard. And then it was just like, uh, like you said, it doesn't happen fast, but it was over a couple of year basis where it's just like we were logging small victories in our head. And if you think of our team confidence as a stairwell, we just took a step periodically. And then to eventually it was like, well, we can compete with anybody because we've done this, 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 and this guy's worked this, 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 this hard. And we believe in each other that we're able to flip over. And it's, it's a very difficult thing to do to turn a losing mindset into a winning mindset, but it takes time and incremental incremental victories in order to do so, in my opinion, because we went from, we beat teams that we had never beaten in school history before because we just, we had competed with them prior or we won, we had really good practices or uh, yeah, people put up PR personal records in the weight room. And it's just these small confidence boosters facilitated by leadership that eventually, cause we came out, we started zero and two that year that we went seven and three. And then we went on a seven and a seven and one run. And it was just finally like, and it turned over and yeah. we started beating teams that we never beat. And that never was able to happen at my college, which is interesting because it was almost a very similar scenario as a, it used to be very successful. But when I got to William Jewell, the team hadn't been successful in a long time. And again, it was almost like the same, but we never were able to turn it over because it's yeah. an extremely difficult thing to do. And then when you go to a team, like when I got to the Raiders, the culture there was so strong and the winning mindset was so strong that it was, again, it was palpable. You could feel it. It's like, we were never gonna lose a game. And now it's just got stronger. I remember yeah. this past year, it's, it's to the point where like we are, especially our leadership, we're at a point where we're, it's even, we're dumbly confident. If, I mean, I can't even think of the proper a academic words, but it's like unreasonably confident. So like in the, th this past year, we were losing by 10 with three or four minutes left in the game in Conda, a championship international game. And I remember looking at Adrian Platts come on the sideline laughing and going, it's going to be crazy when, when, we, when we win this, like, pff, yeah. this is going to be that's, some crazy. That's the winning. Like, yeah. that's it's the... like, this is going to be some crazy shit that we come back from 10 points yeah. in a couple minutes. Yeah. And we got yeah. the ball. And so we scored a touchdown, stopped them with some luck. And then we got the ball at our own four yard line with like a minute 50 left. And it was like, okay, well, and then scored with like 45 seconds, you know, yeah. it's like, no, I think, I think that's, that's what we're talking about. Right. It's this, it's this, that's the best example of the winning mindset that I can talk of that I can think of is two captains of the football team who looked at each other and laughed. Yeah. Thinking about the next three minutes of football when we're down at 10, 10 score or 10 points, two scores. So it's like, I've been on that. And I've also been on like, we're fucked from the opening kickoff. And the build from this to that is time, individual dedication, and then incremental victories, in my opinion. And then hopefully mm -hmm. these incremental victories pushed by the leadership that like you're talking about, like the individuals who do their part, and then hopefully people jump on once you have small victories. Yeah. And uh, yeah. But it's such a difficult thing to do because that that's my college career in a nutshell is a failure to do that thing. Yeah. You know, and then you, you know, you can get into, you can get into other, other 
you know, things that feed into that is, you know, recruiting plays into that, getting the right Absolutely. guys on the team. Um, you know, the, the, you know, coaches, there's like, there's a lot, there's a lot of different factors. Oh, there's a ton there's, of variables. It's, it's not quite that simple, but you know, one thing I struggle with in, in, in my job is, is, you know, when I took over my, my organization like a year and a half ago, right. The culture just, it wasn't good. It wasn't right. Okay. Um, and, and I, I think part of that, it started with the guy that was there before me. Um, you know, he'd been there a while and, and so, uh, trying to change the culture, um, you know, it, it became like a daily thing and it became just like a daily grind of like, of like trying to, trying to just get everybody kind of going in the right direction and, and, and kind of try to figure out, Hey, what are we, what are we going to be about? And then, you know, we've done some, you know, we, and like with everything, like you go up, you go up, like you're doing well, and then you kind of fall off, you know, like crap, where did that come from? And then you get a little bit better. And then you, and then you, you kind of fall off and then you get a little bit better. It's kind of like the stock market. Like it just kind mm -hmm. of slowly going up, but it has its ups and downs. Right. To the point to where now I think that, I think that we have a, a, a good culture and, um, and, you know, guys are finally starting to understand like, Hey, like I have a job to do a job to do that I can do that I'm very capable of doing. Like I'm talking about from like the individual perspective, right? Yeah. They have a job to do. There's an expectation to them. They need to do it because they need to do their part because it feeds into the, to the other, to the other parts of the organization for us to be successful. And, and, and unfortunately, you know, unsuccessful in, in, in my world can mean something pretty bad. It's not just, mm -hmm. not just losing a game, you know, somebody, somebody could get hurt. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I, I I was thinking about something else, you know, it, from an individual point of view. And, and I think about this now, like, even if I'm just working out or, you know, when I was at, when I was at ranger school and I was having to hump it through the mountains and I was tired, I used to, this is funny. I used to actually used to sing Christmas songs in my head. Like, I, don't, I don't know. I don't, don't ask me why. I don't know why, you know, you're so tired and hungry. I used to sing Christmas songs in my head, but then I used to ask myself, when I, when I was like, man, I really could just want to quit. Or I think to myself, like, Jesus, if I fall down this cliff right now, I could just break my leg and I could go home and like, be done. Like, that's where I was at, right? And I used to, I used to ask myself, like, are you going to be a man or are you going to be a bitch? I used to ask myself, like, hey, are you going to be a man or are you going to be a bitch? Because it, cause, cause the man is going to keep walking up this hill. The bitch is going to quit. And I, and, I, and I knew at those moments, like, hey, it was better to live with the pain of discipline than the pain of regret. Mm -hmm. And so some, some, some of this mindset thing that we're talking about too is, is driving on and going forward. It's obviously the harder road, but driving on and going forward um, and the pain that you feel now uh, while you're trying to keep going, when you think, when you think things are, 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 are at their worst, that pain that you're feeling now is not near as bad as the pain that you would feel if you quit. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think we've kind of led ourselves again to a new topic is, is I think it's, it's, it's easier to instill that discipline within yourself and have a mindset, a winning mindset for yourself, build it for yourself. Mm -hmm. But I think, cause you kind of touched on the leadership aspect and kind of what you're talking about now is how do you get others to to get on board like the question of how to make an individual winning mindset into a group winning mindset is something that i think we can expand on and the different type of leaderships and and how that 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 trans the transfer of confidence the transfer of work ethic the transfer of of uh culture uh can take place because i think i think leadership Leadership is something that's so difficult to define, in my opinion, and so difficult to pinpoint because, yeah, you can go and Google it and probably say something like the ability to influence others into a certain direction or whatever the case may be. Um, but in actuality, there's so many variables, but there's also so many different ways to be able to do that. Yeah, And so... I think that would be interesting to hear on your perspective because it might be one of the first times where um, 
the experience of being a leader within American football might be different or even maybe not even different, but more extreme because like you've pointed out, the circumstances are different. The circumstances are far more severe um, in your profession than mine. So I think we found our new topic. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Funny how that works. Yeah. It works out pretty well. It's, it's actually just building on each other, which is nice. Yeah. But yeah, I think, I think winning from, to wrap it up, I guess in my career, I've been on both sides of the spectrum and getting from one side of the spectrum, especially in the positive direction um, is one of the hardest things in my athletic career being able to achieve because you can have all the individual ability in the world and you can be surrounded by talent. Like we pointed out our senior year, that wasn't an yeah. untalented football team. Uh, but creating a winning mindset and creating a positive culture is half the battle, but maybe the most difficult thing to actually achieve for winning programs. Yeah. Uh, because it's not a, it's not a, uh, it's not a coincidence that when you look at college football, since they've instituted a playoff, whatever, let's say it's three, four years now. So 12, 16 teams, eight of them are, are, are repeating or, or, you know, of the 12 teams that have made the college playoff, whatever the statistic is, you're going to get, you're going to get Alabama. You're going to get Ohio state. You know, you're going to get Clemson. Clemson. Yeah. You're going to get these, these teams and it's not a coincidence. It's not yeah. by chance. And it's not because yeah. they have the same players. They rotate through and they're, they've developed this, this machine by exactly what, what we're talking about facilitated from the top down that just creates winners. Yeah. But that's the most difficult thing to do. Well, I, I think, you know, I think the next topic that, 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 that we'll talk about, I think is going to be the hardest because, you know, I sit here and say the things that I just said, like I, like I by no means have it figured out and I still no. struggle. I still struggle on a regular basis thinking like holy shit like how is this going to work you know like oh this is not good um and you know there's i there's still there's still gaps within me as an individual there's still gaps within my organization when i was in college there were still gaps in my in my football game you know mm -hmm. and and so like i by no means have it figured out but it'll be a i think it's probably gonna be our hardest discussion yet Leadership. Yeah, absolutely. I've been, I've been asked that before. Like, Hey, Sean, what's a leader to you? Or how do you, it's, like, it's a great question. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have a defined answer. So Patrick, thank you again. I hope everybody enjoyed our third installment of captain to captain. I think it's a, I think it's a really cool segment that Pat thought of and basically talk about things that people normally don't you know converse about because it's it's kind of not concrete topics it's kind of somewhat somewhat philosophical topics and and getting a u unique perspective from from you pat is i think is extremely interesting i've enjoyed it good we will we will get back together soon um and yeah until next time stay safe and ciao cacao are you going to say bye? Bye. Oh, sorry. You can say, you can say ciao, cacao. Ciao, cacao. Super. <laughs>